Step one, get yourself a car that needs brakes. Parking brake up for safety. Here's the jacking point on the front right. See the notches? And here's the front left. All unibody cars have jack points. Just Google yours if you're not sure and be sure to use a jack stand. I've got a lift, but if you're jacking it, chalk the rear wheels. I figure if you have a lift like me, you probably don't need this tutorial. Five 21 millimeter lug nuts on this Toyota. If you don't have an impact, crack them half a turn before you jack up the car. There's two bolts to get the caliper off. These are both 14 millimeter. Start with the bottom one first on the passenger side. Start with the top bolt on the driver's side. It keeps the caliper from rotating on you while you try to loosen it. <coughs> Excuse me. Wiggle the caliper off. I like to hang it from the strut, carefully. Use a zip tie if you're a total put. To get the rotor off, we have to get the cylinder mounting bracket off. One 17 here and another one there. They're tweet. So get your big boy ratchet. Ugh. Us northerners may have won the Civil War, but we get to deal with rusted on rotors, so ugh. Toyota put two M8 by 1.25 threaded holes in these rotors to thread a bolt in and push the rotor off. But I'm replacing these rotors, so I'm just gonna use a faster, more universal method. Just take a nut, thread it on loosely so your cameraman doesn't get donkey teeth when you do this. I proclaim you emancipated. See that rust on the hub? That's why it got stuck. A professional would take that off before installing the new ones to make the next guy's life easier. This is really annoying. You know what? F the next guy. New rotors usually have a film of oil on them to keep them from rusting on the shelf in Hong Kong. So take some brake cleaner, carb cleaner, vodka, whatever solvent you prefer, and wipe it off, or else your first few hard stops will be smoky as hell. Both sides. Slip the rotor on. Now let's go swap the pads. You could easily do this step on the car if you're not doing rotors too, but this is easier to demonstrate. Verify that your new pads look just like your old ones, which is an issue more often than you'd think. You should also get a fresh set of hardware unless you bought the good ones, as well as some grease for the contact points here. Should come in a little packet. I prefer to use my Baba here, because it has a brush. The pads are under some spring tension, but they'll wiggle out. If not, go grab a Jeremy Clarkson and tap them out. Take detailed pictures of the location and orientation of each spring clip. Every car maker does it slightly different. This RAV4 uses two mirrored copies of the same basic clip. These just pop out. You may need a good pry bar or a shitty cheap Harbor Freight screwdriver, which is basically the same thing. I had a 50-50 chance and I got it wrong. That's the one. Just hand press it in and don't be afraid to wire wheel away some rust if they don't fit. Common issue on old cars, but this 2017 ain't too bad yet. Don't forget the other side. The original pads have these spring clips on them that Bosch didn't give me, so you don't really need them, but I'm gonna swap them over anyway. Apply the brake grease anywhere metal touches metal, starting with the tabs on the ends of the pads. Take care not to get grease on the rotor side. I find it's easiest to insert the pad at an angle and then rotate it in. It's greasy and spring-loaded, so some initial failure is excusable here. Wash, rinse, and repeat for the other pad. And that's the pads done. There's one more thing to grease though these slide pins. 
These are what the caliper slides on as it clamps and unclamps. And if they get gummed up, your brakes can get stuck on. You just pull right out of the boot. Take a rag and wipe that clean and apply some new grease. And then push them back in until the boot snaps on. That's important. Pull it back to make sure. Toyota puts this rubber seal on one of the two pins, and I don't know why. Nobody does, and it doesn't matter which hole it goes in in my experience, but to be safe, just put it back where you found it. Sliding the mounting bracket back on can be irksome with the rotor flopping around, so I like to snug it down with one lug nut just to pin it down while I work. Slip it on and line up the holes for the 17 millimeter bolts. Torque to 72 foot pounds. That's the exact spec, but I was taught by a 30 year vet that 80 for the mounting bracket bolts and 30 for the caliper bolts, while rarely correct, will always be close enough. There's two more metal on metal areas on the pads to lube up where the inner pad touches the surface of the piston and the outer pad where these fingers grab it. So smear some on here and some on here. Damn and blast. The new Sick. pads don't fit inside the caliper. So what do we do? We push the piston in. They make special tools for this, but I've always just used Pop-Pop's old jumbo C-clamp. Works great. Make sure you're clamping on the body and nothing crushable. Give it some angry turns clockwise and you'll see the piston retract. But wait, as it retracts, it's pushing fluid back up through the lines to your reservoir. You want to check the fluid reservoir every once in a while because you'll see the fluid level rise. This was already low because the pads were already worn, so it's just going to be back to normal. But if it was topped off recently, it'll overflow and brake fluid eats paint, so suck some out with a turkey baster if you get into the danger zone. If you got some of them fancy dual piston calipers up front, you'll have to compress them both simultaneously to avoid playing whack-a-mole. Top tip, use one of the old pads. And if you got four pistons, get bent, Ricky Bobby. Can't help you. Look at that, slips right on. Line up the holes for the 14 millimeter bolts. Spec for the RAV4 is 25 foot pounds. You can see the reservoir is now halfway between min and max. Once we do the driver's side front, it should bring it back to full. Everything is the same as the passenger front, just mirrored. Before installing the wheels, I like to put some old motor oil on the studs. It's rich in vitamins and minerals and promotes even and accurate torquing while fighting corrosion. Ugh. Get one lug nut started so she don't fall off on you. Lower it down off the jack until the tire just kisses pavement. And torque to 80 foot-pounds in a star pattern. The rear brakes on this rig are actually fine, which makes sense because the fronts do 90% of the work, but I'm going to go through the process for you anyway. Start by getting the caliper off. Toyota uses these drum-in disc brakes for the rear. The drum is used as the e-brake, but there's no special tools needed if you're only doing pads and rotors. This rubber cover accesses the drum brake adjuster, but you shouldn't have to deal with that during a routine brake job. Just an FYI. Same two 14 millimeter bolts. Slide the caliper off. The rear calipers weigh nothing, so you can just let them dangle. Same two 17 millimeter bolts for the mounting bracket. <sighs> Rotor should slide off with a wiggle. If they have a lot of miles, they may hang up on the e-brake shoes here. If that's the case, just tap it with a hammer. 
This entire process is the same as the front, just smaller. Make sure all your contact points are lubricated. You can tell which one was on the inside from the piston mark. Don't forget your slide pins. Hey gorgeous, come here often. Slap the rotor on and install the caliper mounting bracket. Torque to 65 foot pounds or 80, I don't care. Since I didn't replace my pads, the calipers fit right back on. These rears compress just like the fronts. If your car doesn't have this drum and disc design though, the caliper has an e-brake mechanism built into it, so you'll have to figure out the proper way to screw the piston in. Otherwise, you'll go ham on it with a C-clamp and damage the caliper permanently. I like Toyota's drum and disc design better. Official torque spec is 20 foot-pounds. How's the view down there? Stomp on the brakes a few times to seat all the caliper pistons. I'm in park, shut up. Take it for a test drive, alternating between hard stops and gentle stops to bed the new pads and rotors together. Best to make sure there's no one behind you when you do that. Thanks for watching.